In this video, I'm showing you 10 things that you must do if you just got a new iPhone. I'll show you some of the best features and also settings that you must change for optimal performance on your new device. And even if you don't have a new iPhone, you'll still learn something new in this video. So if you're ready, hit that like button. Let's go ahead and jump in. First up is setting your photographic style. If you got an iPhone 13 or newer, you can set what's called a photographic style for your photos. These are different than filters because they can change the way certain parts of a photo's color science work while maintaining skin tones. You can choose your photographic style in the camera app or in settings. Swiping through the different options gives you a preview of what each one will look like. My favorite is called Rich Contrast as it really makes the subject in the photo stand out. I also think a lot of people will like the Vibrant option as well. And you can also adjust each one to really fine tune the look even further. If you have an iPhone that supports it, let us know in the comments what style is your favorite. Next up at number two is setting your video settings. Many people will get a new iPhone and just start recording video at the default settings, not knowing that they're missing out on a bunch of quality. You can set your iPhone's video resolution up to 4K at 60 FPS, which will make your video look sharper and also smoother. 4K60 will take up a lot of storage, however, so if you care most about sharpness, I'd recommend choosing 4K30, and if you care more about smoothness to your video, I'd recommend choosing 1080p60. However, if you want the best of both worlds, choose 4K60, but keep in mind it will use a lot of storage on your device. Another setting I'd recommend turning on is called Auto Low Light FPS. This will automatically downgrade the video's frame rate when in bad lighting so the sensor can capture even more light. Number three is customizing your control center. This is another thing that most people just leave at the default settings and don't realize that their iPhone can be so much more useful if they take the time to customize it. You can add so many widgets to control center. Some of my favorite include dark mode, my Apple TV remote, access to a quick note, the calculator, and also Shazam music recognition. These toggles can be even more useful if you press and hold on them to reveal even more options. So if you have a new iPhone, I'd recommend browsing settings and pick some useful toggles to add to your control center. Next up at number four is a feature called back tap. I talked about this recently in another video, so I promise I'll be concise, but this feature is just too darn good to leave out of this video. Your iPhone can perform certain actions with either a double tap or a triple tap on the back of your iPhone. It's a very long list of shortcuts that you have to choose from, and the ones that I use are double tap for camera and triple tap for spotlight search. Some people like to use back tap for other things such as screenshots, the flashlight, and also control center. The only thing I wish is that there was a setting to decrease the sensitivity because sometimes back tap gets activated when my iPhone is mounted in my car. Number five is turning on haptics for the keyboard. This is a new feature in iOS 16 and it lets you have really satisfying haptics when you type on your iPhone's default keyboard. Open up settings and go to sounds and haptics. From here, click on keyboard feedback, and then you can choose to turn on sound feedback and also haptic feedback for the keyboard. I can guarantee once you turn on haptics, you'll never wanna type on your iPhone without it ever again. So go and try it out and let me know your initial thoughts in the comments. Number six is automatic downloads for Apple Music. If you're subscribed to Apple Music, you may know that this is very frustrating. Whenever you add a song into your library, it doesn't automatically download it to your device. You have to do this manually for each song or album. You can actually turn on a setting called automatic downloads in music settings. This way, as soon as you add a song or album into your library, it's gonna automatically start downloading to your device. This feature has saved me many times when traveling and when in airplane mode, I am so glad my iPhone downloaded everything for me. Number seven is to turn on battery percentage. Just like the haptic keyboard, this is another new feature in iOS 16 that people really, really like. Apple has added the option to see your battery percentage inside the battery icon. To turn this on, head to battery settings and turn on battery percentage. You'll also notice that the battery level still goes down throughout the day inside the icon itself. This way you have a visual representation as well as the numerical value inside the icon. This saves me a lot of time because I no longer have to swipe into control center just to see my battery percentage. 
Number eight is to change up your default sounds. Inside settings, go to sounds and haptics. The first sound I always change on a new iPhone is the texting notification sound. I find the ding of the bell really, really annoying, so I always change it to some other sound such as Aurora or Bamboo. Inside this settings page, you can also choose if you'd like to adjust your ringer volume with the buttons, which I always leave off. I always set my ringer volume one time inside of this settings page, and it stays the same all the time. One final setting in this page, if you choose headphone safety, you can choose to reduce loud sounds coming from your iPhone. You can set a certain decibel limit, and anything above that limit will be filtered by your iPhone to protect your hearing. Number nine is to add widgets to your home screen. Your home screen can become way more useful with quick glanceable information through these widgets. My entire home screen is actually made from widgets and I've been using this setup for a while now and I really do love it. I have the fitness widget, music, batteries, my calendar, the weather forecast, and also life sum for tracking my calorie intake. The bottom of my home screen may look like it's just applications, but this is actually the Siri suggestions widget, which can suggest applications to you based on your usage and time of day. This is the best widget I use by far, as it always has the app that I want to use next. It's almost creepy how well this works, always suggesting the app that I want to use in the widget. And this Siri suggestions widget is so useful that I have three of them filled up on my second page as well. And finally, at number 10 is customizing your lock screen. iOS 16 lets you customize your lock screen with various fonts, colors, and also widgets. To do this, press and hold on your lock screen and then press on customize. You can also do this from inside settings as well. I love to set the color of everything to match my wallpaper and also choosing a font to match the style of the wallpaper is fun as well. You can add widgets right below the clock and you can also have third party widgets in here as well. With iOS 16, you can have as many of these lock screens as you'd like. And if you want to see even more detail on this, make sure to check out our full video walkthrough on how to customize your iOS 16 lock screen. So hopefully now after watching this video, you can get the most out of your new iPhone. I'm also curious to hear from you guys. So make sure to head into the comments and tell me which new iPhone you have. If you guys found this video informative and helpful, please give us a like as it does really help us out. My name is Michael with IDB and I'll see you next time.